Hey, what's up? It's Kelly back with another video. I got dry lips. Today, I'm going to be talking about Squid Game episodes two through four. So let's get into it. Um, I already gave a brief description on the show and my past videos. So um, if you don't know what Squid Game is about or you haven't seen episode two or don't want any spoilers, don't watch this. Basically, episode two opens and we discover that the facility is storing the dead players' bodies um, in a basement. They burn the bodies in little furnaces. There's an announcement in back in the players' room that there are now 201 players. And um, people literally start begging to leave like they're so like, you know, stressed out. Like this is just after the first game, you know? So they're like, what the heck? Like this, people are dying and stuff. Like it's too much. That's my opinion! So they get on the floor, they start begging to leave. They're trying to reason with them. They're like, oh, if this is a debt, like I can pay it off. Please just let me go home. And so then one of the guards is literally like about to kill all these people because he's bringing up the rules and he's like, oh, clause two, like if um, a player refuses to play, they will be eliminated. Thankfully, Wong Su, he brings up that clause three is that if a majority of the players vote to not play, um, then the game is over. The guard clicks a button on his remote and the piggy bank lowers from before and um. 2.5 billion won get deposited into the piggy bank and they tell the players that they can leave now and all the dead players families will be recompensated everyone will go home broke so everyone's like dang well should i stay for the money now you know so then they hold the vote and player 456 goes first and he votes to go home that leads everyone else to start voting to want to go home so then in the end between 201 players 100 want to stay and 101 want to go so um they let them go home and they tell them that if the majority wants to come back then they can play again i realize now that i'm saying these people's names wrong jihan sung wakes up and he's with say kong her name is kong not kang and so um they're both tied up she gets out of her restraints you know, she robs him for all the money that he had on him and then she leaves him no bad days. Ali Abdul wakes up and he is with Cho Wang Su. And so Cho goes to buy a phone and um, he lets Ali use it. He lets Ali use it to call his family. And I guess he lives like way across town. So um, Cho gives him money to ride the bus home. And Ali is like, I guess he's like, you know, everyone is like a bit financially um, burdened. So he's like extremely grateful. He like becomes like indebted to him. Like, you know, just like out of, Cho being nice. So then after Ali and um, Cho break up, Jihan Song, he goes to the police trying to report the facility and they immediately act like he's crazy. And um, Jihan, thankfully, he brought the card that had the number on it with him. And so he gives it to the police to call. And I guess he dialed the number wrong and some woman answers. And it's like this huge embarrassing thing. And the cop thinks he's like messing with him. So he like sends him off. Very stressful, but terrible. Then we see this these two dudes come out and there's this one dude who's like so hysterical and this other dude who's like really chill with him. And so I at first I thought it was just, um, you know, another person there at the jail, but it turns out this dude is an undercover detective. So he asked him what he was talking about and the cop is just like, oh, like everyone's crazy. He came here talking about a game. So then we cut to um, Sang Woo and he's watching his mom from afar at her shop, but he can't approach her. So then Jihan sees him and he starts giving him advice and Sang Woo tells him about all the debt that he collected, like all the millions and how he gambled. He bet on his mother's business and their home and like everything. So I guess he's just ashamed to like even see her and tell her because she doesn't even know. As Jihan is sitting there sitting talking with Sang Woo, he gets a phone call and it's the hospital telling him that his mom is there and she's sick. So he's like, what the heck, you know? So he goes down there and they tell him that she basically is diabetic and I guess she like kind of went into shock. They might need to amputate her foot. She needs to rest. She immediately, when she wakes up, she gets up and like tries to leave the hospital. And so Jihan is like, please mom, like you have to stay here. You can't leave. Like, you know, they'll cut off your feet. And she's like, well, how am I gonna pay the rent, you know? So then she left him and kept going. And he was just standing there looking stupid. And we cut to the detective, the private detective, and he's at his brother's apartment looking for him because I guess he hasn't paid his rent. So the land person lets him in and um, he sees that the place is empty, but there's a card from the game on his desk. So he's like, hmm, all right, like, you know, this isn't so crazy. And then it cuts to Sekong and she's visiting her little brother in an orphanage. And he's asking like where their mom is when is he gonna take her away from there all the kids are like making fun of him like saying he's gonna die there like he's having to fight for his like rights and everything over there with those kids like his face is all you know he has bruises from fighting with kids because they're talking mess 
So she's like, oh, like, I'll get you out of here soon. Like, don't even worry. And she's like, mom's coming back soon. So then um, it cuts to Ali trying to get his pay from his boss. And his boss is like, oh, like, I'm broke too. Like, you know, ask your coworkers if they received their paycheck this week, you know? And so Ali is like, no, you're going to give me my money. Because he saw a little envelope of money on his desk and the boss shoved it into his pocket real fast. So he was like, oh, no. So he attacks him and pushes him towards this machine because he works at like a car part factory and his boss's arm gets stuck in the machine and it like you know it crumbles it all up and stuff and he's bleeding and screaming and he drops the money so while his arm is stuck in the machine Ali takes the envelope and just runs then we see Se Kong and she's meeting with an immigration person I guess she's trying to get her mother back to Korea because she was trying to um we find out later in the season we find out later in the season that yeah she's trying to get she's trying to get her parents she's trying to get basically her mother to korea because she's in china right now the specialist was supposed to i guess put her with a broker that was supposed to help them get over but then the broker took her money and left so she came to talk to him about that and the, the dude is just like oh well you know you just have to try again with someone else you should have known this it's gonna be about 2.5 million so she's like what they're messing with her they're playing games with her at this point so she freaking um holds him at night point and she's like you like used me you lied to me and then she takes an envelope full of money out of his pocket and just dips so then we cut to sang woo finally talking on the phone with his mom and she's so happy and he's like, she's like, when are you coming home? And he's like, oh, it's going to be a while because I'm still in the U.S. on business and it's a lot happening right now. So she's like, dang, you know? And then as he's about to tell her, I guess, the truth about everything, um, a woman comes up to her stand trying to buy something. And she's like, oh, I was just on the phone with my son, like from the U.S., like he's single, you know, he's very handsome. And she saw a picture and um, she was, and so the girl's like, oh, can you hook me up with him? And his mom was like, oh, he's real choosy though, you know? And then the police roll up looking for him they're like oh he owes us a whole bunch of money and like he's been on the run and when we find him it's going down and his mom and the girl are just like and we cut to sang woo and he's like in a little dark dirty apartment in the bathtub drinking his life away about to like go to sleep and drown in the tub you know <coughs> about to drown in the tub so someone rings his doorbell and they stick a little note under his door and it's a card and invitation back to the game so if majority decides to go back, then the games will continue. So you already know he's going to go back. So then we cut back to Jihan and he's begging his friend from the first episode that was at the ATM with him for a loan because I guess he's also his boss because Jihan is a chauffeur. And so, um, you know, his boss, he's just like, no, um, I don't have that type of money. And Jihan is like, I'll do anything. Like, you know, he's like, well, we don't have money to pay for like anyone doing anything. He goes to a little market and he's just sitting at the market looking sad, drinking like shots of vodka eel o the old man walks up on him and he's like oh like it must be fate that we met you know and so jihan is like i guess and so um jihan over offers him a shot and he's like i wish we had some food the old man pulls a bag of ramen out of his um bag so they eat dry ramen and talk and stuff O lets him know that um he wants to go back to the game this kind of convinces jihan to go back because the old man feels like he has a chance because he did better than Jihan in the red light, green light game, you know, which is true. So I guess, you know, it was kind of reverse psychology to get him to go back. It cuts to Jang Dong Su and he's been hiding out since he got out of the game. And um, he meets with his henchmen to bring him some money and um, he reveals to his henchmen that he received an invitation to the game. So um, he's telling him that he plans to bring his squad with him and get the dudes to, you know, hit the place. And, and the henchman reveals that the guys are going to be reluctant to do it because, because Doc Su has already lost a whole bunch of money in the past. And now his like reputation is tarnished. As Doc Su is telling him, like, you know, um, I don't think it's going to be an issue like that. His henchman is like, oh, yes, it is because you owe this dude a whole bunch of money and he's looking for you and he's here right now. So basically his henchman set him up. Doc Su stabs him to death for setting him up as he should. And then eight men get out of two trucks with weapons approaching him. And only two of the guys had guns and they still managed to let him get away. All he had to do was literally like run and jump into the sea off a bridge. It was so stupid. So then Ji Hung goes to his ex-wife's house and asks her for $2 million. And this I thought about it for a second and I was like, dang, like they got money. But then she was like, no, I'm actually broke. And I didn't believe her honestly because I'm like the fact that you thought about it. Like if you were really broke, especially in this environment, you would not think about it. 
And so then um, she's like, I don't have it, but my husband does. And he's not going to give it to you. And you need to leave before he gets back because I don't want it to be any issues. So then they get into an argument because Jihan is like, well, why can't you just ask him? And she's like, well, no, I'm not going to ask him for anything because you left me to go and labor by myself. One would call him a deadbeat, but he's really just too nice because when his wife went into labor, someone at his job passed out and I guess they like had a stroke or something and died and he was sitting there trying to save them instead of like trying to get to his wife who was in labor. So that's why she blames him and I would too. But I mean, um, he's kind of like a deadbeat, but you know, he looks out for a guy on and um, I mean... Then, just then, the ex-wife's husband walks in with their daughter, Guyon, and she's like, hi, dad, you know, so then he's like, let me just head out. So he goes outside, and the husband comes out with him, and the husband is like, I'll give you the money, but you need to stop contacting Guyon, because this is a lot of stress for her, and we're about to leave. So Jihan is like, uh, like, this is my daughter, you know, so he punches him in the face, and freaking Guyon was standing right there, and she's like in the rain with an umbrella just all innocent she's like dad why i was like dang jihan is on his way home and he runs into the detective and the detective tells him that um he saw him at the station earlier and his brother is missing and he believes that it has something to do with the game that he's playing and jihan just pretends like he doesn't know what he's talking about and then he just leaves 